Hello. So I recently read this comment on one of my YouTube videos and honestly it broke my heart and it made me sad for a little bit and that is the reason for today's video. So I wanted to come out here and talk to every one of you because I think as a coder and especially as a project manager and most of all as your friend, I think it is my responsibility to help you get rid of this kind of stinking thinking. Yes, there is a word for it in the English language now, thanks to this uh, psychologist, Albert Ellis. Okay, uh, not to digress, but I really want to share with you what I find wrong with these kinds of questions and mostly with this way of thinking. Let me start by saying I can understand this 100% because I have been through this myself. A few years ago, I was in the same situation and I'm so glad that I could overcome it and that is the reason I genuinely want to help you do the same and hope you find your happy place too and you know like you are able to enjoy what you do. First off I want to say although I mentioned just one of the comments in the beginning of the video do not think that I'm trying to single someone out. The only reason I am making this video here instead of directly replying to the comments stating how I feel about it is so I can reach a wider audience and I can help each and every one of you who is going through the same challenge. So please watch this video with an open mind and I apologize in advance if this video hurts anyone's sentiments because you should know that this, that is never our intention and I am not being blunt, I am just being honest here. Okay, so the first problem with this kind of thinking is the lack of patience. Let me tell you, three months is nothing. You should not even think that you can be productive as a web developer or as any other tech employee when you know nothing about the company, you know nothing about their infrastructure, you know nothing about their culture, the product they're trying to build or the service they're trying to provide. At least that is exactly what your company thinks and is prepared for. Yes, in my experience as a hiring manager, I can tell you that when Whenever a company hires a new employee, they are prepared to give them the time to navigate the environment and they know that the employee cannot be productive or even add any value for the first three if not six months. And you know what? They know that you're going to do the exact opposite of being productive because you're going to take more time off of your senior member schedule and you're going to ask more questions to your teammates and you're going to need constant supervision. Thus, you might even slow down the team in the beginning instead of adding value to your team. And guess what? The companies are also prepared for this. At least some of the good ones are. Why do you think most companies have a probation or a training period of three to six months for a new employee? And if this gives you any consolation, let me also tell you that a company is allowed to fire you with minimum explanation or legal formalities in your probation period. So if they still have you on board, towards the end of your probation period, that means you're doing well, at least in your company's eyes, if not yours. Now this brings me to another issue, setting over or unrealistic expectations from oneself, which gives birth to the quitter mentality. So you don't want to continue doing something that doesn't work for you. I get it completely understandable. But before quitting, just do this for me. Just ask yourself, have you tried it long enough? Have you tried it hard enough? Do you think it's fair to say that you've tried everything in your capacity to make it work and it still doesn't work for you? You know what? Warren Buffet, the billionaire investor, he didn't even become a billionaire until he was 50 years old. In fact, 99% of his wealth was generated after he was 50. Can you imagine that? Imagine if he would have lost patience and he would have quit. Well, we sure wouldn't be having this discussion right now for sure. So my point really is, if a company can set realistic expectations with its employees, why can't we do that with ourselves? And this reminds me of a great saying, people overestimate what they can do in a day, but they often underestimate what they can do in a year. I absolutely love it. So now the question arises, what does a company want from you in the first few months of you starting a new job if your productivity is not what they're after? Well, they want to see your work ethics, how motivated you are to do a job, not how fast you can do it. 
How willing are you to learn? Do you ask enough questions? Do you well understand your tasks and clarify them if and when needed before jumping onto them? And finally, when you start to understand things and you start to get the hang of the working environment, how willing are you to participate in discussions by either asking analytical questions or providing your opinion on things when needed or to even propose a solution or uncover the risks associated with the solution? I mean, it's all about participation and adding value, you know? Now, I understand each work environment is different. So if you think your company is pressuring you to complete more tasks by setting unrealistic deadlines and they're comparing and ranking their employees based on how many hours they overwork or if they encourage their employees to work crazy hours for long periods of time, I mean, I can understand if it's sporadic or temporary, but if this is a part of their culture and this goes on for like forever, this in my opinion is a toxic work environment and you might want to reconsider your choice of working for this company in the first place now my next problem which i've time and again felt that many people are guilty of making this mistake including myself is underestimating project management i don't know be it consciously or subconsciously but i feel project management is a very misunderstood field in the sense that it's not an escape for you if you are a bad coder or if you think that you're bad at coding. It's not as easy as you might think. Okay, to make you feel any better, I want to share my experience here, which honestly is a bit embarrassing, but I feel it's really important for me to admit it out loud here. So I did my bachelor's in computer science and then I did my master's in computer science as well, which was never the plan. The plan was to complete the bachelor's in computer science and then do an MBA after. Why? Because I just hated coding. So I wanted to switch my fields like immediately after completing my bachelor's because I could not bear it. And, and like later I realized that this is what I think. I think that I hate coding, but the truth is that I never actually tried enough, you know, to, to know or understand what it's like. The goal at the time was always just to be good enough to pass the exams and complete the program somehow. And it was actually after my bachelor's program or let's say towards the end of my bachelor's program when I gave coding a shot. When I started doing online courses to learn coding and I started doing hobby projects, so that's when I first realized that it's so much fun to code when you're not in a pressure environment because before this, I never tried to code like outside of school environment. So it was either practical stuff or to write down algorithms using a pen and paper to pass exams. You know, we often fear or hate the things that we don't understand. And I well realized that that was the case for me. So I decided not to quit just yet. And I gave coding another shot. And that's how I did my master's in computer science. And then I worked as a web developer for the first few years of my career. As I passed out of school, and join the workforce oh my god i can't begin to explain i can't tell you how overwhelming and difficult it was for me because coding in a school environment and coding in a very sophisticated environment is completely different like the first few months were really different and I faced major imposter syndrome. And I've talked about this before in one of my initial videos on this YouTube channel. So you can check that out if you wanna know about my experience and how I overcame that. So I won't go there again, but like long story short, eventually you realize that this feeling is totally normal and it happens with everyone and it gets better with time and experience. Now, coming back to project management, it takes a lot of work, a lot of time and very strong interpersonal skills to be a good project manager, to serve your team and your company as a good PM. So if you want to choose this as the next career option for you, I would encourage you to ask yourself the following questions. Why do you want to become a project manager? Are you a people's person? Do you enjoy organization and documentation and asking a lot of open-ended questions to brainstorm solutions together? Do you enjoy working in a team environment? Do you enjoy participating in and organizing a lot of meetings, a lot of discussions throughout the day? Do you enjoy group sessions? Is this something that excites you? It's very important to ask these questions to yourself and to try to find the answers to these questions because the bottom line is you can never succeed at anything you don't enjoy. That being said, a good thing about humans is that they never cease to surprise.
so I cannot discount the fact that maybe you are one of the exceptions. In all honesty, what I've come to realize is that it's really important to do and to pursue what you love doing, what you enjoy, because that's what brings you joy. It keeps you interested. So you want to keep learning and keep improving yourself in what you do, which in turn brings you professional success. So that is my request to you. Please do not take this video personally. I'm not trying to judge or criticize anyone's way of thinking. Please think about what we've discussed in this video. Take a pause. Think about what you want to do. Think about why you want to do that because understanding your why is what keeps you motivated. So I hope my message gets to you. Thank you so much for watching this video and until next time.